All right, so this fiction piece, um, like most of the fiction pieces, was written pretty late in the campaign once we knew where all our pieces were falling into place. Um, and it's just meant to show Laporte's increasing separation psychologically from those around her. Um, that while the rest of her uh, Ubuntu comrades are kind of descending into this pit of introspection and uh, paralysis, almost thinking themselves to death, paralyzed by the moral consequences of what they have to do every day. She's accepted it, um, and she's moving on. And it's interesting, a lot of players have commented that she's sort of this borderline psychopath, which is possible. You can read all her visions um, as just schizophrenia, mental illness. Um, and here you see she's... Uh, actually, sorry, I, I have the wrong um, command briefing here. This is from Admiral Calder, just outlining the strategic situation. Things are now bad um, for the Federation, as if they weren't bad enough before. Um, their war efforts really disintegrating. They're being choked strategically in terms of fuel. And I think I've mentioned this before. The entire uh, arc of the Federation military, at least in release one, was very much modeled on what happened to the Imperial Japanese Navy towards the end of World War II. And if you look at what occurred, um, just their sheer combat losses, it's absurd. We talk about how how many losses there are in free space, but what ended up happening towards the end of World War II is just staggering in terms of its scale, um, both their warship and their fighter losses. And here we get the other side, um, sort of the Alliance's military successes, some hint as to how they're covering the war, that there is some dissension on the home front. We wanted to, I'd, I'd love to present the Alliance home front as much as we presented the Federation home front, just so people could get a sense of the depth on that side of the war. And here's the infamous kitten picture. Uh, one of our testers begged that we cut this, and we worried that it would destroy the mood. Ultimately, I think it worked out, especially when we realized that a lot of the objections came from the fact that people thought it was a brainwashing tool. They thought that the uh, kitten was automatically presented if the uh, soldier read any objectionable content that their Ubuntu minders um, weren't totally okay with. Uh, so we tweaked that just to make it clear that it was part of some sort of, I don't know, personal gizmo. Um, and it turned into some sort of minor meme, which I suppose qualifies as a success. Uh, here we get a farewell letter from Bree. Um, he too is sort of leaving the story, which again represents a subversion of the Blue Planet theme at the time, which is that uh, in Age of Aquarius you get these two wingmen at the beginning who are with you all the way. And here, it uh, doesn't last. They are sort of devoured by the war. And uh, I want to talk a bit about the design intent for this mission, which was to create a very small dogfight, um, which was first invested with a lot of emotion, um, so it felt meaningful. Uh, we wanted to put both tactical and emotional meaning into the interaction between a very small number of ships. How many times have we, in free space, as players, gone out and shot down three or four fighters without really thinking about it? We wanted to make the player think about it. Second, we wanted this dogfight to subvert the invincibility, or at least the insuperability of the player, where the player, simply by the fact that they normally cannot die or have to succeed in their mission to proceed in the campaign, becomes this invincible, unbeatable figure who can never lose. And lastly, we wanted to show that there were heroes on both sides of the war, um, that you, the protagonist, are not really anything special. You're not the chosen one that uh, there are people out there who have just as much claim to be the main character of the story um, as you do, and only end up not being so because they die under your guns. Um, that every time you go out there, you're shutting down as many stories, as many possible campaigns uh, as you're planning. All right, so we're going into the opening dogfight, and I actually want to turn this over to Quantum Delta to talk a bit about this dogfight, which I think is one of his favorite in the campaign. Yeah, it is. Um, this dogfight is pretty much the crux of all fretting ever for me. This is this is a team versus team game for multiplayer in a single player campaign, which is just downright awesome. Uh, it's made all the more sweeter by the people in the enemy ships as well. I know they're just AI, but uh, I begged. Patuza and the rest of the dev team to make this mission as hard as they dared. Uh, this is the only one in the dev commentary that's actually being played on Insane. 
just as tribute to um, the two pilots on the other team because Zinni and Zero were actual real members of the Free Space community. Uh, most people will remember them from Free Space 2 just as the, the pilots that uh, flew with you and in into the lion's den, but the reason why they were there, the reason why they were named, is because they were the two top-ranking pilots in PXO's Free Space 1 multiplayer. Zero is where I learnt most of my AI control skills from, and Zinni is where BD learned some of his uh, slightly more advanced joystick control on. So there is some real legacy in this mission, and it always uh, really gets to me. Thanks, and yeah, Definitely I just wanted to mention. Part. Sorry, Go I on. just wanted to mention that uh, it's it's one of my favorites too from a fretting perspective because. Um, it can't be done without, um... Sorry, minor technical glitch here. But, uh, it, it really, this mission could not be achieved without our, um, without the AI Fury made. In the early builds of the campaign, this mission was done with ships that had maximum retail AI, and had, oh, on top of that, a ton of special hit points and a ton of shields, just to make them challenging. But in the final build, these ships don't really have any particular shield or hit point buffs. They may have some armor, but I don't think it's very significant, and I think your wingmen do too. Your wingmen, in fact, get more advantages in terms of Fred side buffs um, than the enemy do, just because the enemy AI is so good, they don't need that much help. Yeah, unfortunately, my video's uh, frozen up, so somebody just uh, give me give me notes as we move forward. Um, and I just wanted to note that uh, this mission also has this alternate path. Um, where the player can get shot down, um, and it's sort of a failure in that uh, you're killed, or you're not killed, you're, you're defeated in combat. But um, it's, uh, it's also a success in a way, because you can move forward in the campaign without having to kill Zinni and Zero, without getting in the way of their mission, um, although you won't see the ending. And we wanted to do that again, to subvert, like I said, the idea that the player can never be defeated simply because, like Bioshock tackled, this notion that you have to do the things you're told to do in the game in order to move forward. And we wanted to play with that a bit. And we wanted to give the player the option of failing if they wanted to, or if they just couldn't beat Zinni at zero. Except for all, what are the chances that a relatively green Federation pilot and her two also relatively green wingmen are going to be able to take out these five SSC operatives? Um, some pilots can do it uh, pretty easily. Others have trouble with it. Um, it depends on your approach to the mission and how long you've been flying yourself. Uh, so I'm actually going to hand this over to the E. Uh, do you want to talk about anything about the dialogue iteration or the player experience? Well, um, the goal here, um, I think, was uh, first to, to uh, get Laporte um, out on a solo mission. Um, how to, to better show how she handles um, uh, being away, uh, being in combat uh, without the uh, uh, safety net of uh, that that uh, Bree and Kasim uh, represented. Um, she uh, and also to show how she reacts uh, uh, when when she's faced with uh, 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 responsibility. Um, here she gets uh, um, into this uh, uh, dialogue with the uh, enemy commander. Who, just as as uh, um, Zinni and Zero were, um, he's just here to to uh, uh, save uh, someone he cares about. Um, if you, in case you didn't know, it's uh, uh, um, Alpha Deal uh, of the 222nd Nightwolves, who um, is supposed to be trans transported here. And um, he. It's it's just like one of the uh, later missions. Um, it's just to show that um, there are humans on both sides of the conflict. Now, the the enemy isn't this this uh, uh, faceless and unknowable uh, um, group that um, just comes in and destroys you. They are they are there uh, for the pretty much for the same reasons that you are there and. Um, we wanted it. Uh, we want, wanted to show that there's a genuine uh, um, conflict there. 
and um, just how uh, um, Laporte uh, uh, justifies to herself um, the the actions she takes. Uh, here she takes, she she says, uh, "You bastard, Tev made me. You made me do it. Um, all these things." And um, yeah, she she. Uh, um, the the uh, her squad mates here say hey, we we've won we've uh, uh, avenged the uh, uh, previous losses and the port well she's conflicted once more. Um, but uh, any anything you want to add? Just that this mission really benefited from a lot of dialogue iteration. Um, it was a little preachier early on. Um, and what we ended up doing was uh, toning it down towards the end and making it a little more tactical um, because we felt that got across the tension a little better. Because um, we did really worry about hitting the player too hard over the head with our... Well, I don't even know if it has a message, just with the facts here. Um, and uh, the E and I really did a ton of dialogue iteration on this mission. Um, on all the missions, we went through towards the end of development and just cut everything down to be a little shorter, a little, a little better. Um, which I think really helped. And um, many of our missions we play so many times that they lose all emotional punch, but this one is still fairly powerful for me, um, just because of how difficult it sometimes feels to uh, understand that these guys, these wings, could be the hero of any other campaign. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's about the extent of my commentary on this mission, we know it drew a really powerful reaction from our players, so we, I think it succeeded, which I'm very happy with. <laughs>